Welcome to Dixie Storytime World. A Donkey Reads, a Turkish folk tale. If you'd like to buy a copy of this book, the link is available in the description at the bottom of this video. Once, many years ago, a small village in Anatolia inhabited by the Seljuks was conquered by the Mongols. Their leader demanded tribute from even the poorest of the villagers. Mustafa and his family wondered what they could give. They lived in a tumble-down shack and barely had enough to eat. They owned an old donkey, but he was no longer strong enough to carry even the smallest of the family's many children. Husband, said Mustafa's wife, we can give the donkey. He no longer earns his feed. He may save us from the wrath of the Mongols. The donkey has served us well for many years, but he will not do for the greedy tyrant, Mustafa said sadly. He will surely have me beaten for daring to give such an unworthy gift. Since his family could spare nothing else, Mustafa agreed to lead the donkey to the tyrant's stable. One by one, the villagers presented their offerings. A huge bag of grain, a fat rooster, a basket of apricots a baked baklava, a baby lamb, and a plump rabbit. Mustafa looked at the gifts for the greedy tyrant and thought of his hungry children. He slowly led his aged donkey to the Mongol and then bowed. Sire, said Mustafa, I beg you to receive my humble gift. The Mongol stepped down from his dais and strode toward where Mustafa was standing. You insult me! The tyrant screamed, What would you have me do with that pitiful creature? He is a poor excuse for a donkey. Sire, said Mustafa, he is very gentle. Look at his fine, intelligent eyes. The Mongol snorted, You will pay for this indignity with a beating. But, Sire, he does have intelligent eyes. So spoke Nasruddin Hoka, the village wise man. I believe that I can teach him to read. You jest! Your jest will cost you this villager's beating! The tyrant roared. I can teach him to read, if I want to, Nasruddin said softly. The tyrant looked at him. Then do it! I order you to teach him to read. Bring him before me in exactly one month. He will read by then, or else. Nasruddin took the reins of the donkey as the Mongols stomped away. Mustafa and the other villagers were very frightened. How can you teach this ordinary donkey to read? Mustafa asked him. Neither my wife, nor my children, nor I can master the scribbles on a page. I will begin training the donkey right away, Nasruddin insisted. You shall see. For the next month, he groomed the donkey until his coat shined and the animal held his head high with pride. Each morning and each evening, Nasruddin fed the donkey in a most unusual way. He put barley between the pages of a book. For many days, he turned the pages slowly, very slowly, and let the donkey eat the barley. After a time, the impatient donkey began to turn the pages with his tongue in order to get at the feed. Then, for a few days just before the month was up, Nasruddin offered the donkey no feed. On the agreed-upon day, he took the donkey to the tyrant's stable. Well, said the Mongol, my donkey looks much improved, but if you boast it idly. The tyrant ordered his grooms to put a huge tome, one with many pages, before the donkey. The hungry animal began to turn the pages with his tongue. He turned page after page after page, more and more quickly. But of course, there was no barley to be found. The hungry donkey began to bray loudly. He brayed and he brayed and he brayed. What is this? the tyrant asked. You said you would teach him to read. Nasruddin looked at the tyrant with a lifted eyebrow. Why, sire, he said, you saw him turn the pages. You saw how quickly he read. He read to the end of that very large book, indeed, one he had never seen before. You even heard him read aloud. Read aloud? asked the puzzled Mongol. Yes, said Nasruddin, a sly smile crossing his lips. A 
donkey does not talk like a man. And the villagers and the wise man laughed and laughed. Perhaps even the Mongol had to smile, though we don't know whether Nesruddin escaped the threatened beating. Nesruddin Hoka was a 13th century teacher, judge and imam from a village in Anatolia in what is now Turkey. He wrote many stories that have survived more than 700 years. These tales are marked by his offbeat humour, even when critical of both those in power and those oppressed during the Mongol rule. Though little known in the West, Nasruddin and his descendants are honoured throughout Turkey and the Middle East. Music